Hey everybody, so uh, all you off-graders, uh, hot water, one of our biggest problems. So in this scenario, uh, what we've got here is a 48 volt battery system. Uh, we've been running our hot water off of propane. And uh, by my math, this is 100, 200 bucks a year. But we're done charging our batteries at about 10 o'clock in the afternoon, or I'm sorry, 10 o'clock in the morning, 10.30 in the morning. So from then on, all of our solar is just off into the ether. So I uh, started exploring the idea of converting a water heater to be 48 volts. So um, one of the big problems with this, in theory, theory, don't do this, you could hook up a water heater straight to 48 volts DC. All a water heater is, is a tank with a heating element and a thermostat. Uh, there's, there's more, there's pressure relief valve and so forth, but we only care about the, the uh, thermostat and the element. So if you hook it up to 48 volt DC, that, uh, um, sorry, the thermostat is, is essentially a relay. And think of it this way, every, on an on a AC system, 60 times a second, it's alternating kerning, AC. So there's a very short period of time, one sixtieth of a second, that, that that contact will arc for as the switch is opening or closing, opening specifically. Um, and it, that gap is created and it jumps the gap and, and it causes damage. So with AC, it's very small because it's a 60th of a second. DC is solid straight current. So now you got 48 volts at uh, 30 amps, uh, continuous current jumping that gap. And you're going to destroy your, your uh, thermostat. If you don't destroy it right away, you will with time. So what I've done is I've kept the thermostat at 110 because I got a 110 heater. I removed the heating element, which, um, apologize, it's not right here, I thought it was. Uh, anyhow, the heating element is right here. So this just unscrews, it's got a little gasket with it, and you screw, you uh, want a new 48 volt heating element from Amazon is like $30. So that got screwed in. So the relay here, or I'm sorry, the thermostat here, is wired 110 just like you normally would. But instead of the other side of the um, uh, thermostat going to your heating element, it doesn't. It now goes out, and this is not safe. This is a temporary proof of concept working. But basically, you can see I've got a plug here, and my light is on because I've got a, I've got an open ground right now, which will be fixed. But um, point being, the thermostat is is low enough temperature that it's supplying power to this plug. This plug has a USB connector or a USB charger that then goes to this relay, three volts in or five volts in, um, and then it, it connects the uh, DC power. So basically the AC power, when the thermostat is open and then closes, AC powers, a DC power is applied to this relay, which then opens up the 48 volts to, to then go to the heating element. Now, unfortunately, the one I got off Amazon here is a hundred amps at 60 volts, but the problem being they, their specs say that you should be good to 40 amps with just the heat sink without a fan. Apparently not accurate because it fried. Um, so now I am actually doing Two, th two of these relays connected together so that I'm only passing, instead of passing 30 amps through it, I'm passing 15 amps through it. That should be enough to, to allow proper functioning. Uh, but they say that anything below 40 doesn't need a fan. That is just uh, proof, Do does not work. This thing was hot as can be and you can, you can smell the, uh, the melt. So that is not accurate. I gave it a 25% margin of error and, and was not good enough. So now I'm giving it um, something along the lines of a 60% margin of error. So that should, you know, that should be a huge buffer. It should work well. Um, now, I have also bypassed, and don't do this, I have bypassed everything to get the element working on 48 volts to check that, and sure enough, it absolutely heats the, the water to appropriate temperature. It probably takes a little bit longer than, than the 110, but not much. Uh, so the idea that this thing will turn on um, at uh, basically sunrise, once I know that we've got electricity coming in, it'll turn on at sunrise, it'll run all day long, and it'll shut off just before uh, sunset 
to uh, you know make sure the batteries stay topped off. There's no reason to drain the batteries. This does keep water warm overnight, so that even first thing in the morning, if I need warm water before it turns back on again, I'll have warm water. But it should turn on early enough that it's not a problem. Um, so far, I, I'm really happy. I could not find anybody online that had actually completed this system and had actually hooked up a 48 volt DC um, element to a water heater. And it works, and it works just fine. Um, and is gonna bring our propane usage for hot water to zero. So that's uh, basically what I've got. So re again, real simple. I've got, um, uh, I, again, I apologize. I got power coming in from the outside, coming in, hitting my thermostat in and then out. And then the out goes back out to my um, uh, switch. So basically this is just a regular 110 outlet that is powered when the thermostat is on. That 110 outlet I'm using to power a relay to power the 48 volts. So uh, fairly simple. I got a lot of cleanup work to do here now that my proof of concept is done. But uh, so far, very, very happy with the system. We also put a inline uh, pump, recirculating pump, that basically goes right below each of our faucets uh, in order to uh, have hot water there. And we'll just control that with, again, with an outlet that's plugged into Google. So we'll ask Google to turn on the hot water. It'll start the recirculating pump for us, brings hot water right to the floor below the faucets, and you're, you know, you're good to go. We're wasting a lot less water this way. Um, within about three seconds of turning on the faucet, the hot water is there already. So really like this system. Got a lot of cleanup work to do, but uh, the system does work. So wanted to let you know and uh, have a great one. Thank you.